Welcome to the Effects Loop. I'm Diaz. I'm Chris. And I'm Sean. And we're keeping you in the loop with our community. All right. So, uh, as you heard, there was a new there's a, a new voice on the intro. We've got Sean from Lollygagger Effects. Hey, fellas. Welcome. So we uh, we actually got to meet Sean in person, like in real life person at Summer Nam. Well, you yeah. did. I don't think I did. Oh, did you not go to the Spring Joy event? <laughs> no, that was the day before I was there. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. We had all the fun without you. Yes, you did. And I think, and I can't, Sean. You you were at summer nam uh, what two days or was it just one day no we we ended up going for one day we were gonna go yeah. two but it's kind of one of those things where first of all me and my wife didn't really know what to expect so <laughs> that kind of blew our minds and we brought <laughs> our kids down so okay. we kind of did we kind of did a vacation uh you know did all the sites and stuff and then i think we spent i think it was saturday or maybe no, it was Friday. We spent all yeah. day there. Yeah, because Saturday is a that's just a horrible day. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a free for all in there. It's just every man for himself. And I love my favorite thing is that every year, like at the, right at towards the end of Saturday, because I always, I've got to stay the whole time. I can't leave early because I'm always afraid I'm going to miss something. Like someone's going to be like, "Oh my gosh, do you remember last year when so and so won the lottery and bought everyone Paul Reed Smiths or something like that?" Right. And I'm just, oh yeah yeah no i totally missed that because i left early but just the look on everyone's face at the end of saturday mm. it's oh, just yeah. total death i love it it's my favorite thing in the world because we all hate it like the week after we're like i don't never want to do that again it was horrible right. i'm so tired but then like two weeks after that you're like man next year's gonna be awesome <laughs> dude, dude, dude when you can when you see grant look at you and not smile wide <laughs> but kind of give you a little smile yeah you, you know you're wasted you're just burnt you're like this is you know i mean everyone has a great time i had a great time and oh that was, was fantastic. actually actually not anything i expected really uh, uh most of that was cool good things you know oh, i was about to say did you expect it to be more like business oriented and not like summer camp um no i actually kind of figured it would be more like summer camp <laughs> um no i was uh you know, and I think the problem was is that uh, I've been listening to everybody talk about Winter Nam for mm-hmm. years and years, and everybody says Winter Nam is immense in mm-hmm. terms of there's mm-hmm. different levels. There's yeah. a lot, you know. So when I walked in there, I'm thinking it's going to be a maze, and I'm not going to be able to find anything. And I was really surprised how well laid out everything was the aisleways were like actually had room to walk through uh i think the only area that you couldn't walk through was the uh builder's boutique (laughs) display (laughs) i think if that one's always like because it's just it's a it's one of the most epic displays especially for the people like me who that's the world that i like to live in is the boutique pedal world that's where I feel most comfortable. It's where, and, and I just love the toys. It's there's just so many people who feel that way too. It's always, yeah. yeah. And Karen and Grant, they need a hundred thousand thank yous, and uh, they they pulled it off, and they they did it last year, and they did it this year. God, I hope they do it next year. But uh, they busted their butts, and I appreciate it. Me and my wife for for one for sure. Yeah, and uh, because that's the thing too, because Lollygagger is both of you, isn't it? It's, yes it is and i think that's a big thing too because that's like big year is grant and karen and mm-hmm. and lolly because there's a lot of husband wife combos out there yeah i uh, first it started out with just me but mm-hmm. then i couldn't uh do i mean the the coloring and the finishing it takes an immense amount of work so if you're just doing that that's great but trying to do the point to point and do all that and at first it was fine, but then when you get backed up and, you know, Colette said, hey, let me try my hand at that. And, she, you know, she's very artistic. And uh, when she started doing it, I'm like, I don't care if I get slow or not. You're going to do that. You do it better than I do. Yeah. <laughs> she does. She does a great job, you know. You just, so, got, you just got drafted. Yeah, pretty much. 
<laughs> so congratulations, you're now part of the company. <laughs> Here's your title. Let's get to work. Well, she's definitely the president. I'm, I'm more <laughs> like I'm more like R and D design kind of guy. I don't. I have no desire to do. I mean, I can do the socials and that's fine. But she's on the website. She's taking care of you know business with ordering and all that kind of stuff. So uh, you know, I I don't think at the level that we are now, which is still immensely small. Uh, I don't think I could be doing it like I am right now if I didn't have her. Uh, mm-hmm. And the fact that we, it's funny, I love my wife very dearly, but we don't have, we had things in common. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's like she calls rock and roll ram ram music because basically she doesn't understand it or get it. So we don't have a lot of music in common. <laughs> I, I just imagine you like yelling at your wife, you just don't understand the music. <laughs> yes. your door, go to your bed. <laughs> I, I, I point at somebody me. and I go, that's blah, blah, blah. And she's like, <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> But if it's a soap opera star, she'd be like, oh, you know. So that's, um, that's how my wife is with like it, almost anything gets horror related. I'm like, no, no, no. He built this, but he worked with this guy and then they built this together and it's really cool and I like it and I want it. And she's just like, can I buy a purse? I'm like, fine, you buy a purse. I'll buy a pedal. We'll call it dude, even. Dude, I don't get that. My wife, I, I, I literally call her the bag lady. Because she buys a bag for everything, a purse. <laughs> She's like, I need a medium-sized bag to put my computer in, but it, I, I don't want it as big as my purple bag because my purple bag, I, I was like, and then I think to myself, well, I'm the idiot here collecting guitar pedals and stuff, mm-hmm. so I got no room to you know talk. I, but, I, I did that argument one time. One time. I, mean, <laughs> I was just there and said, I said, because she likes to buy, I think the brand is Vera Bradley. Okay. And they start they're they all have the same somewhat design. It's usually kind of like a floral or something like that with different colors. And I'm like, you already have a bag that looks just like that. And I said, Why why am I having to buy you a bag that's just a barely different color? She goes, You buy a pedal that makes you sound barely any different. I said there, I said, you know what, touche. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're good because yeah, yep, you're right. And and the worst part of it is I don't condone like buying without talking to your wife, but every once in a while we like, there's kind of like this like threshold limit where I don't have to discuss it, but I don't like her. It's not, that I don't like her knowing, but I don't want her to know how many times I've gone under the threshold and that right. starts adding up. <laughs> but <Yeah. laughs> my, my kids are the worst though. Cause they, I've got all my pedals on display and they're like, that's a new one. Isn't it? I'm like, shut, shut up. up, shut up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, it's the same thing. And, but the the thing is, is that the business was really cool because it's something we can share together. Yeah, and, that's great. and she puts as much effort. And I mean, she's like sending. She sent me a new logo today. We want to do a kind of a stamp uh, mm-hmm. on someone because we're gonna we're gonna you know probably talk about this a little later, but we're gonna diversify. And uh, and the next couple releases are going to be in metal enclosures. Um, they're going to be custom. Um, one of the wonderful things about my wife is that she is the comptroller for a, a metal fab shop. Oh, so, yes. Yeah, so I have powder coating. I have metal at hand, and a bunch of. Are you speaking in after dark? You're just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you like grab her keys really quick, and, like quietly and running in. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, <laughs> say, but uh, we have that opportunity. So I, I, I think That's we're gonna we're gonna keep the uniqueness. But uh, I think um, maybe down the road, maybe I mean the uh, the canalia and the and the cherry box are gonna stay wood. But I think uh, you know, for the time being, the next couple of releases are gonna just gonna be in metal closures. I mean, we kind of did. I kind of took my cue from uh, Stephen Pettyjohn uh, when he came out mm-hmm. with his preamp. It was immensely different than everything out there was. It was huge. He had the cool uh, relic yeah. look. Everybody went gonzo. Over and they it. had those. They had those big bulbs, like the ant yeah. bulb. Yeah. Uh, the, the I forgot what they're called, but you know what I'm talking about. The, indi- the jewels. The, yeah. The jewels. That's it. The jewel indicators, and those are. It, it really did set him out. He does, and he, he does have that uh, kind of. I'm trying to think. It's not like steampunk. That's more Ed with wrought iron. He does kind of more that. Yeah, yeah. I guess it's, I guess it would be kind of like if Ed tried to go mainstream. 
which he's not going to, and I don't think we want him to. Um, <laughs> I don't want him to. He does too no. many cool things the way he is. But, I mean, the, the pre-drive was like, it, it's what got him attention. And then mm-hmm. he said, okay, people are know me or somewhat. Now I'm going to do the Foundry series. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of how we... Well, we kind of fell into that, but we had because we had already been having the canal out. But we thought, okay, that's fine. We'll have the canal and cherry bucks come out. People will understand the brand; they'll know the quality, mm-hmm. and now we can kind of get away a little bit and do something that one has a really good price point, two is a little bit more functional uh, for your pedal board. I mean, I'm not gonna lie to anybody. You know, our stuff has a little bit of a big, you know, footprint. So yeah. the next couple things that we're going to be coming out with are going to be able to fit on your board and you're not going to have to worry about someone stealing them. And it'll be more of a gigging functional type, type stuff. You know, not that our Canalia and our cherry box can't do it. I mean, Hey, I don't know if anybody saw, but I ran over a Canalia enclosure with my car. I remember that video. <laughs> I yeah, remember so, seeing that. That's those. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> those they're beautiful pedals but like oh, you, I mean, you but but i because you've got i got to mess with the uh prototype of one of the pedals that you're going to be releasing yep yep and it's in that metal enclosure though is like you said th- those are bigger pedals the canalia and the uh-huh. cherry box right and there this is in a i guess standard size pedal kind of mm-hmm. close to yeah it's what, like a 125 b yeah yeah so it's uh it's really cool though and especially going into the metal enclosures you're kind of going towards uh the mainstream thing i mean if someone doesn't want a wood pedal you've got other options now you know that's awesome yeah and and the thing is is we're, who doesn't uh, want a wood pedal what who doesn't want a wood pedal oh i well who you know want a wood pedal i think i think people um I think there's a couple of misconceptions about it. I think one, I think people honestly, I mean, Hey, do you step on your guitar? No, you don't. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, I have that thing lacquered. I think Colette does like five layers of lacquer on it oh, wow. and it's, and it's lacquer. I mean, we, we don't uh, use poly and I mean, they're really pretty, you know, indestructible. I mean, obviously, the only thing you have to worry about is don't drop your cigarette on it. Okay. I mean, other than that, I think you're you could be start okay. doing the Eddie Van Halen rally look on it. <laughs> yeah, you probably, you probably you could. Actually, uh, you know what? Just make it a little ashtray in the corner. You can set your cigarette <laughs> down whenever you're playing in, in between strums. You can just take a puff off your cigarette. That is too funny. No, but, just make, make one with a tiny little ashtray in the corner, almost like a little communion cup, just enough to ash oh, in it. That would be too funny. Well, a lot of us old <laughs> geezers, though, we can't barely touch our toes, let alone go around and try to reach for a cigarette down that's on the when, floor. That's when you pass out and you're laying yeah, down your arms and you barely reach your pedal board. You're just, yeah. well, uh, well, hold on. We, got, we got really distracted really quick. Hold on. We got to do this fun little part. Uh, this episode is brought to you by Stringjoy. Sound better, play better. Go check out Stringjoy, stringjoy.com. They've got customized sets. You can do crazy things. You want to do eight and a half. You want to do nine and a half. You can do anything. You could do all nine and a halves on the entire guitar. They actually just did a video where they did a guitar that was completely plain strings. Oh my God. I saw that. It was it sounded so, horrible, but it was insane. The fact that it, they put actually all that detail and yeah. they actually tried to do it like seriously, they could have half-assed it yeah. and they really put a lot of effort into it. And just like you kept on saying, this is a bad idea. This yeah. is a bad idea. We're going to show you why this bad idea. Well, Tommy's he's like, this is really dumb, but we're going to do it just to show you. <laughs> but it's just, it's really cool. And because you were, you've been inside Strange Joy. You've seen yep. the machines. They're making them there. You can see that in the video. Not a lot of these companies that are putting out strings are doing that. No, they're doing it by hand. And yeah. there is, uh, I mean, they're using actual machines designed to do this you know they're they're doing really great work and you know no i i matter of fact i have just ran out of my last set of uh uh uh, new york uh xls and i think and and ys and i think i'm gonna get some some string joy i i highly suggest it they've got they make great i mean 
they're one of those companies even if they didn't sponsor us i'd still be using them yeah isn't it nice when you can have someone sponsored that you actually like them or use their stuff you know it just makes it feel that much better you know Mm-hmm. It's not like you've got a gun to our head and they just <laughs> stop behind me. You better say nice things. <laughs> and but uh also really we also did a cool giveaway. We teamed up with Clifton Worley, uh the Clifton Worley show and Spruce Effects, and we did a giveaway. We gave away a Whirly Bird, which is a really fun, fantastic pedal. And I wanted to do a shout out because I'm gonna say his name wrong. Someone tagged his actual name and I couldn't find it. But Bourbon Sweats Music was the user on Instagram who won, and I kept wanting to call it Bourbon Sweat Shop, and that's not okay. <laughs> um, oh, Brian does great work. I mean, it, it, all his stuff is top notch. All you have to do is go through and play the whole line that he has. On top of the fact of the stuff he's done with uh, not named other podcasts about music. Um, no, no, the, he, he's done a lot. With, he did, <laughs> yeah, like, Whirly, he did, uh, Blake, he did Blake Tone Mob, and they just did Get Offset. Yep, did, go did Get Offset, yeah. They did a pedal with him. I'm tr- trying he to did, think. He just does great Gear, stuff. I don't think Gear Slum did a pedal with him. No, Gear Slum hasn't done a pedal with anybody yet. I've been talking oh, to yeah. Aaron about it, and Aaron's like, I don't want to do that. It sounds like too much work. <laughs> Yeah, I've gotten the impression that it's not as easy as some people would think. No, it isn't because the depending on the situation that you have, generally what will happen is that the builder and the podcaster or whatever end user that wants to work with you, they are going to have to buy at a certain percentage rate. Mm-hmm. Usually, you know, at a very decent cost, and they're going to have to buy that. Then they have to sell that. So yeah. if it was me, I'm still going to help that person because if my stuff is out there floundering, that doesn't look good on me. So I'm still going to help, but it's yeah. their responsibility to sell that stuff because they have to recoup the cost. I'm so, just going to get 60 cycle, some 60 cycle home to sell it for me. <laughs> it's like, you know, they sold out 50 fifties and like, that was, it was pretty fast on their first run. It was a couple days. Yeah, yeah. They sold 50 pedals, which is pretty impressive. Yeah, definitely. I mean, and and, that was and, one of the early adaptations of the collaboration pedal because it seemed like they all just kind of it went from you really didn't hear about it, with, especially with podcasts. Mm-hmm. Uh, boom, everywhere. Because I know they did what the DNM drive is a well, yeah, that's with, a with Keely probably. and the yeah, definitely. And you've you've got quite a few of them out now. Yeah, and I think it's really cool that, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, cross-pollination with that kind of stuff. Because as far as I'm concerned, it kind of brings the whole community together. Yeah. I mean, when, you know, not even podcasters, but if, you know, like, you know, your Facebook, you know, is a good example. And there's uh, half a dozen others that are the same, where you have a community and you don't want to isolate yourself from those people. So. Mm-hmm it's really cool to bring everybody in and say, Hey, we're doing this really cool thing. And you know, these podcast guys, they're not making a lot of money off these pedals. Wait, people are, people actually make money doing this. (laughs) Oh, I don't. That's why I had to do it. I didn't know. I didn't know people made, I, you know what, honestly, I'm surprised that half the guitar builders make money. Cause I just, I know how much stuff goes into this. And it's, man, I feel bad for the guitar player or guitar builders because to me, and like I can, I can Henry Ford it. I can, mm-hmm. I can get five, six pedals, and I can, you know, slam them, get them out. It, yeah. It's really hard to stop and start when you're building, uh, you know, a handmade guitar. I mean, and there's like so Kevin Equitz that can go wrong. Oh yeah, I mean Kevin Equitz. I mean, he, he's sitting there, and he's, you know, it's just a dude building your guitar. In his so, off time, yeah, in his off time, and <laughs> and he's I think building, he's almost up to like a two year wait right now. Oh well, yeah, and I totally get that, and he's yeah. just building wonderful instruments. So yeah, those guys, those guys got really hard. So, but yeah, I mean, I think that's really cool, and we can kind of bring in the communities, and everybody can, you know, check stuff out. And but yeah, all those builders, some friends with all of them, they're all super great. Sorry, there was an awkward silence. I wanted to see how long I can keep it going for before, <laughs> before I compulsively had to jump in. All right, Good so job. we'll go on to uh, let's talk about some what's new. Uh, Chris, do you have anything new? Uh, it's a negative. 
I figured that. That's why I asked you first. <laughs> um, uh, Sean, what, what what type of new gear have you been messing around with? You actually just you told us in the pre-up. Now you can tell us here. Yeah, actually, it's kind of funny. Um, we're kind of uh, in the slow part right now. Usually summer is slow uh, for small builders mm-hmm. uh, for the most part. And fall usually starts ramping back up. But I uh, decided to go on a like a podcast uh, caster quest on repairing gear. Uh, I have Kyle McIntyre's two seventies MXRs in that I'm uh, one was highly molested that I'm trying to bring back uh, to uh, spec, and both of them need to get the filter caps replaced. Then I'm uh, working on. Uh, uh, Justin uh, Civic's uh, DS1. I'm doing the cherry pit mod on it and a few other things. Which is so, a lot of fun, by I, the way. I, I, well, that, thank that's, that's so cool. cool. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's a fun. It's a fun thing to do. So I, I'm doing Justin's thing, and then I'm doing something for the slum lords, the slum guys. And nice. but that but that will be a little. Uh, I was hoping to get it done sooner than I am, but I. I won't be able to, but I, I'm going to get that out pretty soon. And then I have another one that I'm not even going to tell you because it's going to be a surprise. <laughs> well, so everyone's going to be just losing their mind now. Well, yeah, it's, but I mean, it just happened that way. It's like, oh yeah, you know, I can send this again. So, uh, once I get these out, uh, and I got some orders coming in, I'm hoping to blow these out here by the middle of next week and we'll get back on. I got to pick some boxes up, so I got to get them out. So that's what we're going to do. That's what's new with me. Oh, and I just bought a carbon copy. That was your, but that was like your first experience on reverb, wasn't it? That's, it's my first buying experience. Buying, yeah. You sell on reverb. <laughs> yeah, I've sold. I've sold. You've got uh, to well, nowadays. Yeah, lots of things. I mean, mm-hmm. whether it's our product or I've sold amps and stuff, but I've never bought anything on reverb. And this guy was trying to dump this carbon copy for 85 bucks, and I got my spirit animal, Kyle McIntyre, <laughs> and I wa- I talked him down. I said, 65, and I'll take it. And the guy goes, yeah, okay. And then I had to think for a second, oh, damn, dude. I guess I'm buying a pedal. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah, there's like that moment of like, you're like, I'm going to offer this. They probably won't accept it. And, and when they don't accept it, I'm going to be done with it. And then they accept it. You're like, okay, well, hold on. I got to figure out how I'm going to do this. One second. Let me. <laughs> but th- that's a really good price. 65 ship for a carbon copy. I think a lot of people are, are kind of uh, unloading those just because they have the carbon copy mini carbon copy mini. Yeah. I, I mean, that's fine. I totally understand. I, I Hey, personally, I think, uh, the left hand path of Satan has all mini pedals. Um, <laughs> But that's just my personal opinion. But I understand, absolutely understand people that, hey, you got space that you can only put so many things, so you're going to have to use mini pedals. I, but, I own a few mini pedals. I don't think I've ever gigged with one. I've got I've got pretty big feet, and I'm always afraid I'm going to break them. Well, it's not even that. It's like if you, it's like even a, like a 125B box. So you get some of those that have like two foot switches on it. Mm-hmm. and my mangled foot i'm going to turn all the stuff on at the same time you know yeah so, i usually i try to play barefoot or with socks on mm-hmm. i usually will hit a pedal with my big toe yeah i i'm same thing here i just i got involved in that and i have my balance is about shot anyway so it's like i'm not going to hover my foot over a pedal all right chris uh, how big are your feet Let's talk. <laughs> uh, the foot yes. they're, they're, Put, they're big enough little... that I can manage a Matthews effects pedal easy. <laughs> oh wow! Hey. I think I think we'll have to like that's going to be the way we judge people. All right, what size pedal can you uh, work with <laughs> easily? <laughs> like I'm uh, Russian big muff. Like that's yeah 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 exactly. <laughs> you got big feet there, buddy. <laughs> um. All right. Well, I, let's see. I. Th- I only had a few new things happen. So I've actually uh, started collecting a pedal that's <laughs> somewhat controversial. <laughs> and no. it's the, the funny thing is, is how people are reacting. So I guess I, I've got this time. I could actually say, say my piece because I feel if I type it out, it won't make as much sense, which I'm, it probably won't make any sense with me actually talking about it. So I've been uh, on the hunt to collect the light drives from gear supply co. And 
And if you don't know the story about that, <laughs> Google it. Go to yeah. the gear page. Have fun. Read. We'll see you in a couple of days. Yeah, get but some popcorn and some that's, pop. Oh, and, yeah. oh my gosh. But, uh, I've been working on, uh, I've been like wheeling and dealing and, and trading and, and doing what I can to get a collection of them. Because I, I really don't know what the purpose would be. But... I haven't, I haven't really quite figured it out yet. It's like, I, I know the journey I'm going to take. I don't know where it's going to lead me. I figured I've got a couple options. I can corner a very tiny market because there's probably only seven, the, seven of these actually out there. And even then, if no one wants to buy them, I can just roll them over with a vehicle and show that they're not as strong as a, <laughs> as a lollygagger pedal. Um, but but I, I don't know. We're, we're kind of seeing where it's going, but it's pretty funny because a lot of the builders are getting a kick out of it. Sean, you thought it was funny. I was talking with uh, Cody from Westminster. He was cracking up. We were yeah. talking about, talking it's, about it's, things we could do. It's absolutely hilarious. And you, uh, how many do you have right now? Uh, four. All right. Well, I'm going to say it here. Everyone can hear it. You need to send one of those to me. And you let me. You need to let me do something to it. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm, I'm, I might have to do that. I, you, I got, you have to do that now. I'm not going to go do a Leon on you. No. Which to me, it was the ultimate of that was of great. totally fake outs. It was so cool when he did that, to Jamie. <laughs> he put a Benford in it before, especially before <laughs> the Benford was announced. That was the cool part because everyone's like, "What sort of monstrosity of craziness <laughs> is in that box?" Yeah, it absolutely was totally funny. But yeah, you definitely need to send me one of those, and uh, right. we I'll need to, to do like uh, when when you have like a rat rod, you know, when you go to the starting line <laughs> and you yeah. got this piece of crap Chevette, and it's got like a four fifty in the, you know, that's when you're gonna go. Okay, yeah, check this out. Not what so light I, now, is it? What if I just start collecting them and sending them to builders, and they can mod them as they please? Oh, dude, that oh, would that actually would be, be funny. You know what? That would actually probably that's probably the best idea I could do with this. Dude, actually that is a that was that would be a brilliant idea because you can have like uh you know how everybody has like a well, good example. I was telling you I was doing Justin's uh, DS1. Everybody, you know, Analog Man, Keely, Wampler, uh, you know, Josh, everyone has their their uh, DS1 mods. Yeah. And it's kind of cool. Everybody says this is a C9 mod, this is a blah, blah, blah mod. It'd be really cool to get builders to kind of do whatever they want, their mod on that one pedal that's all the same. I'll have to keep two of them original. I'd have to keep my original because it's right. number 007. Oh, wow. And, yeah, and you can't change that. that. No, no, you can't. <laughs> you can't change that. And then I've got one that's actually has the four from albert mills on it and i couldn't change that one if it's autographed <laughs> by albert mills I no can't. that's really cool so but i think so i'm up to now i have to send one to you I'm, I'll, I'll probably just send one to cody yeah. have him uh mod it as he pleases i'll just send it and have like you can like write a little story about what you did it'll be great oh it actually would be really super fun to do something like that all right well there we we figured it out on air yep this is how business meetings happen except for we're not at chili <laughs> no, um, that's cool let's, let's let's do it oh that's gonna be great okay so we've got uh let's we're gonna talk about a little bit of gear news um as if you're a, a listener who's listened to interviews before we try to get through it but it never happened so we'll just hit it but we're, we've only got a couple things uh origin effects announced the revival drive compact they've been moving a lot of their bigger pedals into the compact line which has been fantastic and we were talking about it earlier this from what i've heard sounds amazing and i, I don't think anyone's ever questioned origin effects quality that's been put out yeah. no not at all they make awesome stuff they use top quality stuff and yeah. you know and you're gonna pay for that but mm-hmm. it's good stuff this is running 385 american um and it's there's so much going on here though there's so much that you can do with this and they've always had been in the higher price range mm-hmm. but like you like you said sean it's always been top quality stuff i've never i don't ever recall seeing someone talk about their origin effects pedal breaking or dying or having any issues it seems like they put a lot into their quality control and it's just fantastic sounds coming out of there 
Well, and anything that you see on reverb or stuff, those mm-hmm. are people strictly selling those because mm-hmm. they want the cash. You know, yeah. the older ones, you know, the, the Cali 76 and all that. It's yeah. They're not dumping them because they don't like them. They're just saying, ah. Eh, or you're Adam okay. Delhanic and you're flipping them like crazy. Yeah, you're you know? making a Cause, lot of money off of them, you know. Because because he, he finds the guy who's like, I need money now. It's like I, it's like the commercial with JG Wentworth. Yeah, <laughs> I, I feel like that, I, it's gonna be Adam's new deal. That's that's his ringtone when people call him. I need cash now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh, I mean, there people aren't dumping them because they're not good. I mean, the the compressors are they're amazing studio. Um, you know mm-hmm. instruments i mean they're they're just really good stuff and like i was telling you a little bit before the 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 preamp is so cool and there's so much going on that you're like i really don't want to take up all the space with this thing until i figure it out but then if yeah. you have in a smaller package you can like ah screw it i'll put it on my board and i'll just go as i go you know mm-hmm. yeah Good and stuff. The normal revival drive is uh, 529 American. So this is, I mean, it looks like pretty much half of it. Mm-hmm. But I mean, that seems like a, a fair price, especially. I mean, you're going from 529 or so, and taking half of it down 385. I, I it just seems like it's going to be a great pedal. It's going to be one of those, especially like in the praise and worship world, where people put a lot of money in their overdrives. Mm-hmm. This is going to be one area that's just going to blow up. Well, and it's going to allow you to do a lot of extreme things and a lot of very subtle things that a lot of pedals can't do. I mean, especially mm-hmm. especially the compressor. I mean, uh, the, the, the variability they have on those things is just insane. And they've got so many different versions. That mm-hmm. looks crazy, too. And yeah. They've got like a stacked edition. They've got different, like the slide rig compact, Cali 76 compact, the bass, the deluxe. It's just, they've got such a great line. It's, it's one of, they're one of those companies that they don't do all these different effects. They stick with their compressor and their, you know, just now recently they did overdrive, but they do it well. Yeah. And, and I think that's totally commendable that uh, a company will say, Hey, this is what we do. And it's like, hey, I'm not going to say we're never going to do modulation. But for the most part, you know, dirt and overdrive and some other things that we're going to be working on. Hey, that's what that's what I like. And that's mm-hmm. what I do. And if you want modulation, man, I heard this is dude. He makes these really crazy pedals up in Minnesota, man. They have a thousand switches on them. So if you want modulation, go see that guy. He's killing it. <laughs> you totally lost me who you're actually talking about. Uh, Joel. Um, Joel? Joel oh. Forte? Okay. I don't I didn't know where to look at. I have no clue. Yeah, he does have a million buttons. I was like so confused for a second. I was like, I feel like I should know who he's talking about. I know. I was I was I was being sarcastic and not naming him, but no, Joel oh. makes awesome stuff. If you oh, want yeah. modulation, that's that's the guy you go see. Yeah, he's he's got a lot of stuff going on there. Oh, that's why it's my bedtime. I'm usually in, <laughs> in bed around eight o'clock. I'm one of those people oh, that has goodness. to get up early for work. I was like, why am I out of it right now? So let's talk about the next thing really quick because this is something that had all of us pretty excited. Mm-hmm. Moore has a new pedal that can capture guitar tone, so it's like a tone guitar modeling pedal. So imagine how the Kemper profiles an amp this apparently profiles your guitar that's amazing it could be fun i i feel like this could actually go this will go like really well or not so hot uh, the three videos i've seen and uh and, you know i saw the in blues video uh what was the other one i saw and then i think i saw a snippet it to me it sounded like it was doing what it was supposed to be doing. The only differences you're going to probably have is volume, mm-hmm. and yeah. you have you have that ability to uh, to adjust that on the pedal. I, I think it's a brilliant thing. I mean, it, it's for an a gig- amazing idea. Well, the thing is, is for a gigging musician, is your Les Paul going to sound like a Strat? No, 
it's never going to sound like a strat. However, if you're gigging and you want that spanky thing and it's in a small pedal and mm-hmm. what, what was, what was the price on that? Um, I didn't, see, I, I was about to look, but I was uh, just in, captivated by your yeah, story. More Point stuff is never super expensive. So it's got to be. I, I, got, I think it's got to be around the hundred dollar mark. It's got to be, if not less, I think a hundred dollars max. I, can, I don't see a price on it right now. Let me find it. So they have, so I have a, f- a flexible Swiss, you know, uh, knife and be able to do some different things that without having to bring a whole bunch of guitars and you're a gigging, you know, musician. I mean, mm-hmm. damn, that's totally worth trying it out. Well, that's, I mean, look at, uh, you have all the people who are about like the line six very X mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And, this is better than that, in my opinion, in the sense of you can, I mean, you play can put your the own Variac. guitar. Yeah, you can play your own guitar. The very I mean, technically, if you wanted to gut and ha- and go through with it, you could put it in any guitar, but it's a permanent decision. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, this is kind of changing that. I just I don't know. I don't know if I could trust it. I don't know how close it would be. I feel like some of it is actually the actual the like the guitar you're playing. Mm-hmm. I play a strat differently than I play my well, SD. Oh, for sure. Well, that's that's the one thing that I was thinking might be a really cool thing to do is that if you get stuck in a rut and let's say you got an LP and let's say you put this pedal on there, you're going to play it and it's not going to be, you know, really close to what you're doing. It's going to kind of make you stretch out, make you do something a little bit different. And if it's at a decent price, I think that alone as a tool to bring out some creativity and stuff. I think that's, that, that would be an amazing thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. So it's got seven slots. I can't find a price. It says it's going to be it's supposed to be available now. <laughs> um, it, says August, it says August 15th. I'm trying to figure out where to buy it. Well, we can, we can, Amazon. We might, we might be able to figure out what's their uh, what's their Kemper, uh, their version of the Kemper. What's the price on that? Um, let's see, uh, ninety nine dollars even on Amazon. Yeah, uh, the Mower G three hundred is probably their most powerful processor. That's at eight hundred. Okay. Well, they've got the they've got the speaker simulator, the IR, the Moor Radar. That's one forty eight. Mm-hmm. Well, that's on reverb. I wonder if that's actual new price or someone's jacked their price up. Uh, uh, sounds about right. Let's see. Yeah, no, that's a little high. Let's see. But they, uh, I, it shouldn't be too much. No, I it, wouldn't think so. It's just weird, though, that Moore's the company putting this out. True. Because no offense to Moore, they're known for just putting out clones of pedals. Mm-hmm. I mean, they've got it. Well, I guess they've been kind of been branching out, like with the IR, the radar, and stuff like that. So I guess they are kind of moving to do their own thing. This is definitely a a way to do it. Well, they got spanked a little bit from yeah. uh, from electro harmonics. So I think maybe to try to uh, not, I wouldn't say save face, but to try to put a new twist on what they're doing. If mm-hmm. they can do some offerings that aren't based off of other designs or other pedals. Um, it kind of legitimizes them a little bit, I think. I mean, hey, they build things that you want this thing, you can't buy it because you don't have enough money. More, <laughs> regardless of how you feel about it, more will give you an alternative <laughs> at a rock bottom price. So now I can go play a 57 Les Paul Jr. in Guitar Center with this pedal and have it with me forever for $99. I'm stealing your soul guitar. <laughs> it's just, it's just like me with, with people's amps. I'm like, here, let me profile that. Really yeah, let, let me borrow your expensive amp for a weekend. Let me see your uh, guitar really quick. Uh, you know what? That would be, could you imagine if that started being a thing and like, you could be like profiling people's guitars with like certain pickups, especially like the boutique pickups. You're like, let me get those Lambert tones over here in that guitar and, and get that sound. Or better really? yet, you're like in the back of a theater and you're at Joe Bonamassa stuff and you're like oh, doing your you're doing your profile and you're like, Hey, you're stealing my guitar. I'm like, uh no, I'm just stealing the profile, dude. 
Yeah. <laughs> and Joe Monomoth was like, okay, but for real, you have to untie me. I've got a show to play. <laughs> like, Ten more minutes, Joe. You're Come getting on, Joe. TV right now. This is insane. Yes. Hmm. This episode's brought to you by yelling at Joe Bonamassa. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people could yell at him. Hey, you know, I, hey, you who, know else is, who else is doing it? Who else is doing it? I don't know. He's like, he's kind of like the Guy Fieri of guitar world, like the guitar world, because it's like, who is he really hurting, anyways? He's not, not, he's not for me. And I'm not, not hurting anyone. He's making, he's making people happy who get to go see his shows and want to see him play and, yeah. and do all this stuff. He's, he's, and he's inspiring people. Who have you inspired lately? Back off of Joe Bonamassa. Leave yeah, Joe I, alone. Yeah, I'm not like, you know, uh, captain or the president of the fan club. But the bottom line is, the dude can play. The dude Imagine can. if you were there. <laughs> he's like, I actually am the president of the fan club. <laughs> the, <laughs> but yeah, he, he's a fantastic he, player. And he, he's a really good singer. And he does play with fire. So, I mean, you know, I can see the little things that maybe some people don't. Yeah. But the bottom line is, he's making people happy. And it's kind of well, one you, of those things. Don't hate him because he has... A half a dozen fifty nines, you yeah. know. Well, and that's the thing too is because I know from what I understand, I don't know Joe's personal life. Uh, from what I understand, he, he it's not like he came from the bottom of the barrel in life. Uh, I guess he he came he was in a, a okay family. Yeah, but he he found something he loved, which was guitar, and he's been playing since he was I don't know probably nine or ten. Yeah. I'm sure I looked on Wikipedia. He's been playing forever. I mean, first pretty- time. His first band was Bloodline. I think he was like fourteen. He did like that. Didn't he play with like the Almond Brothers band at one point? And he like he it's this little kid jamming with all these people. Yeah. And it's he got to hang out with all these blues guitar players and everything. And you know, everyone's gonna haters are gonna hate, but I, I just think honestly, I think it's more entertaining to watch the people hate on Joe Bonamassa. Yeah, a- a- absolutely. It's like, man, there's so many things in this world that you could hate. <laughs> Why waste your hate on something that's not bothering anybody? And, you know, just move on, you know? Yeah. The, the, leave Joe alone. That's going to be the new hashtag for <laughs> Leave Joe alone. <laughs> leave Joe alone. No, just leave him. Like, don't even bother with him. Just He gets, oh my gosh, that'd be horrible. He gets depressed. He's like, where'd everyone go? People at PBS used to love me. Dude, dude's not depressed. Have you seen Inside This House? The dude no. is not depressed. Uh, yeah, I know. I've seen it. I've seen it. It's insane. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I Wayne feel- has every line of almost every year that Fender made an amplifier. The dude is not depressed. <laughs> he's, like, he's, like, he's like, that's a 59. That's a 59. But this one was made two days after that one. Yeah. He's, yeah. Yeah. But how many, how many dumbbells, I wonder, does he own? I don't think he. I thought he has had one. He, I think he had one at one time. Maybe he still has it. But he's a big what, baseman fan, and like the old school Fender amps. Like that isn't that where he like yeah. dwells in the amp he, section. He likes to use the Silver Jubilee as part okay. of his lineup. I don't know if that's changed. He likes to use an amp that's like Dumble or the Dumble, and then he likes using Fender Super Twins. Which to me is just amazingly insane because those those amplifiers are so loud. And but he changed up his style. He's using a lot of humbucker guitars now. He's not really doing strats like he used to. So he's getting his tone, and uh, he, dude's got great tone. So if you want to sound like Joe Bonamassa, buy a Moore. Yeah, there you go. We're gonna beat him up and steal his guitar tone. <laughs> Uh, I, you know what? I'm going to drop this in groups just to see how many people will be like, tones in the fingers. What happens if you oh, take fingers God. out of the equation? Kind of hate the argument. I mean, I get it. Well, it it's, not even, it's not in the fingers. It's in, it's a, a lot's in the playing style. Well, that's the thing people don't understand. It's like, it's, that's the tone. It's like, no. That's the way he's fretting that note. Now, yeah. that's not creating tone. That's creating the vibe, the way he's, you know, wiggling that note. That's that's not really tone. Tone's coming through the guitar. It's coming through the amplifier, you know. And that's just my personal opinion. But you can affect the way a tone goes by playing. But it's uh, it's not like tones all in the fingers. No, it's not. Oh, that would mean that uh, Tony Iommi's tone should be like plastic. 
because he, he has, has no fingers. Oh, he got fingers. Uh, that's too funny. Django Reinhardt only has three fifths of the town that we have. <laughs> that's awesome. I'm trying to think of other people missing fingers. Well, uh, Phil Keegan. I think he's missing a finger. Uh, um, uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, um, Grateful Dead. Uh, Jerry Garcia. Was he missing a f- He was missing a finger. But it he? was in his right hand. It was in his right hand. Uh, okay. I don't know if that should count. Yeah, probably not. But it's, we're going to have to make up the rules of how this is going to go with fingers. Yeah. All right. Really, that's, we're gonna, let's change this subject. Oh <laughs> Chris is like, why did I even get on this? <laughs> he's like, I'm listening to the stuff that I'm going to have to edit out. Well, I feel mad because you keep talking, and Chris is no, like, no. sitting there, and I'm like, Chris, no, no, talk. No, no, the, I don't. Chris enjoys this every once in a while, being able to sit back, relax, and just just, just babysit and be like when John the starts going to ranch, but ah, shh. Like, shh, shh, shh. <laughs> so you don't have Scott here to do it. You just can't be like. Ah. Kind of like how earlier I talked about the sh- the purse shopping, and people might get upset because they're going to take it the wrong way. Right. That's what happens in the world. We'll just yeah. block that person so they don't see it. Well, go. Let's block a bunch of people. <laughs> I'm just gonna go and start blocking people. All right, uh, that was actually pretty uh, good gear news. That's yeah. interesting stuff, though. I- I'm really excited about the revival drive. I'll probably never be able to own one because that's kind of out of my spending range. Just that trade I trade like. your Kemper for one. Yeah, I'll trade my Kemper for one. I've got to. Yeah. I've got to do the Kemper stage soon. I'm excited about that. That's the one I'm not quite sure about. It's it's got its hiccups, but it's a it's a fantastic tool. I gotta tell you what I I and I'll, I'll probably stop discussing this because I got kicked off another podcast board oh. because I was trying to explain my opinion on that on that new product and I guess somebody did not like so. Mm. Oh. So you got kicked out of a group because you didn't like the Kemper. Uh the the new okay. one, yeah. And it wasn't that I didn't like it. I, I I was trying to say I didn't get it. I mean, to me, uh, it's a camper's got pretty much everything that thing has. And I'm not a I'm not a huge uh, knowledge of the camper, but uh, I believe that the floorboard, you know, the floor switching unit can get to a lot of the stuff that's in the head. I, yeah, my understanding. It's so, exactly the same. It's, yes. No. So to me, it's like just buy the floorboard, you know, buy the pedal board. The remote. The the issue with that, the the hard part with that is, and I get, I I understand that sentiment too. I think that it's also that's uh, there's I think there's two trains of thoughts, and neither one's wrong, right? Because it's different needs. Mm-hmm. Um. Especially now if you're, I think that if you're doing like, I'm using the Kemper with the remote, but I still run some pedals. I still run drive pedals and a couple modulations in the effects loop. Mm -hmm. Getting the stage, that's kind of, that's not a big deal for me. But if I wanted to just run the Kemper and the remote, the benefits to having, I would, I would suggest just getting the stage. Mm-hmm. Because you're running less cable, you're not having to run a long Cat Five cable to control the Kemper. Okay, mm-hmm. so that makes that would, sense to me. See, so that's it's, that's it's more of a function me. thing in terms of not that this has more it, or this has less. Yeah, it's a hundred percent just the which do you prefer? Like, I mean, I would get the stage and still use my Kemper, and I could run true stereo. Mm-hmm. Because the Kemper has can run stereo effects that are programmed into it, but it can't run true stereo like you have two amps. It can't run two amp profiles at the same time. It doesn't have the processing, and neither does the stage. But if I was to buy the stage, I can actually use the stage to run out as one amp and use the stage to control my head, and I could run out of the head as another amp. That would be pretty badass. I didn't think about that. So that's another thing, especially if you've already got the head and you just want to buy the stage, you're not like selling the head to get the stage. I mean, that's kind of that. And also I think the stage is more appropriate for people who are in like a quick teardown. Like if you're playing a lot of uh, venues that have multiple acts going on and you've got a quick teardown 
and you got to get out, that's really easy as well. You're not having to worry about move two things or move more than that. You've got one thing, you're in, you're out, you're ready to go. So it's more of a flexibility of the venue and, and your mm-hmm. situation. It sounds like it's more of a, um, and that to me, that the way you explained it, that makes to me more sense than yeah. somebody saying, well, this is just this much better because, and I'm thinking to myself, it's, it's not a lot different than, you know. It's like a Granny Smith apple and a Washington apple. They're both apples, but they're, they taste different. And it's yeah. a, oh, which one you prefer the taste of. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense, especially if you're doing like a DI stuff. You know, oh, yeah. And, yeah, and you just want to plug into the PA system and, and play that way. That and that's makes a like, lot of sense. So I'm playing a gig at this church on Sunday, and I was talking with uh, the worship leader, and I was like, you know, I run direct. He goes, oh, well, that's he goes, that's great because my normal guitar player who I'm filling in for is like he runs Helix. So honestly, if I had a stage, it could be a really quick plug and play into the guy's spot because I've already got my two XLRs if I'm running stereo power right there, plug it in and go. But uh-huh. it's going to be a little bit more complicated with my head and my pedal board because I've got to make sh- just where all their cables are already set up for me to slide into that guy's spot. I'm going to have to get a little bit more creative depending on how it's set up. No, that makes sense. That makes mm-hmm. a lot of sense. See, I'm turning I'm turning people onto the – but that's the problem with the internet nowadays is everyone wants to argue about it. But And I'm then they block you with you, though. I'm just going <laughs> to start blocking people like crazy. All right. Uh, but so – that man i appreciate you being on here i think we're gonna wrap it up it sounds like we've had a lot of fun uh yeah. check out lollygagger effects uh is it lollygagger it is it's com. we're on the okay. socials we're on instagram we're on facebook and uh yeah come check us out we really appreciate it yeah and you make fantastic fantastic sounding pedals that's they're a lot of fun i played jamie davis's last year i played uh his uh uh, can I? Uh, it, it pronounce it for me really quick because I always want to okay. say it wrong. <laughs> okay, the G put the tongue on the roof of your mouth, so it's okay. canal, canalia, canalia. Oh, right. no I'm, I'm just gonna pretend I'm in the Sopranos and uh, that's <laughs> canalia. All right, yeah. so the, his canalia, and I've played canalia in the cherry box, and I played uh, DS1 with the cherry pit mod. Mm-hmm. And I also got to play that prototype, and they oh, they're so much fun. That's one thing I got to say about your pedals. I love them because they go from tame to wild. Yeah, that's what we like. So th- check them out. We've got uh, you can join our Facebook group, leave us a review on iTunes, all that fun stuff. Uh, check out our YouTube, uh, our Instagram. We're usually posting crazy fun stuff on there. And if you ever feel so inclined, you can email us at theeffectslip at gmail and I want to again thank our sponsor, Stringjoy. Check them out, stringjoy.com. And we will see you guys next week. Bye. Thank you for having me on, gentlemen. Yes, thank you. Yeah, no for problem. Being on. All right, bye, guys. We are, we are, we are.